Hello, Bakuch Jin here, and in this video I will talk about Steam spanning and censorship of visual novels and other anime style games. I have thought of making this video for a while, though what ultimately motivated me to actually do it is the recent censorship of the visual novel Rewrite Plus. The localization company behind this visual novel, Sekai Project, recently released it on Steam with less explicit artwork than originally found in Rewrite Plus, stating that they had made these changes to ensure the visual novel would not get rejected by Steam. If they weren't able to publish it on Steam, less people would end up buying it, which would end up losing them a lot of money. Now, looking at the artwork in question that got changed, I would say that this is quite tame. In fact, I would say a lot of mainstream anime have parts much more explicit than what was removed. Considering the type of content that can be found on Steam and how tame this content is in comparison, it might seem very odd. On Steam, there are a fair amount of games and visual novels with straight up pornographic content, some of which features lolly characters. But despite this, Sekai Project decided to censor Rewrite Plus, which caused a bit of an uproar among some of the people that backed their localization Kickstarter. This uproar did not seem to be unexpected, as they started their posts about these changes by offering refunds to the people who were unhappy with these changes. In this video, video, I will try to explain this situation by going through Steam's history of bans and censorship of visual novels and other anime style games, and talk about the current situation, where there seems to be a complete lack of consistency in what is and isn't allowed on the platform. First, I want to talk a bit about the history of visual novels on Steam. Visual novels have been officially licensed and translated over to English quite a while before they started appearing on Steam. However, before Steam, there weren't that many visual novels getting localized. What Steam enabled, with its large user base, was for visual novels to sell far more copies than they could before. Because of this, a boom happened in the English market for official localizations of visual novels, with there now being a large enough market to fund frequent releases and expensive licenses like for instance Clannad, Muv Love, and the Grisaya trilogy. Many of these visual novels, as well as some of the other anime style games, originally had 18 plus content, which was not allowed on Steam. And to put these titles on Steam, this content had to be removed. Something that became common though was the use of external patches for 18 plus content. These patches restoring the missing content of the censored Steam release generally being found at the publisher's own site, either for free or for an extra fee. This system seemed to work quite well for a while, as people who wanted the 18 plus content got it, while Steam avoided having the trouble of hosting adult content on their store. This situation somewhat changed, however, in May 2018. At this time, Steam started sending out notices to some of the developers of these visual novels and other games that used the external 18 plus patches, telling them they violated Steam's rules for pornographic content and that their games would be removed from Steam. Of these games that was going to be removed, one managed to raise a lot of eyebrows. This being Honey Pop, which is a popular hybrid of a puzzle game and a visual novel. Honey Pop had quite a large following due to it both being a popular game that a lot of people have played, and some large YouTubers having done Let's Plays of it with millions of views. The news of Honey Pop and other games getting removed from Steam started spreading quite a lot, with some larger gaming news YouTubers covering the situation. This reaction from the public, as well as the coverage, was generally quite negative towards Steam's decision to remove these games from the platform, and the developers of not just Honey Pop, but also other games were considered to be victims in an unfair decision by Steam. With this backlash, Steam went back on their decision of removing these games, and then decided that they would go for a new approach to sexual content on the platform. This idea behind the new approach was stated in a post on Steam June 2018. 
In this post, their main message was that they would no longer be focusing on policing what's allowed on Steam, outside of things that they decide are illegal or straight up trolling. Basically, with this, they decided to let adult games onto their platform without the need of external patches. This was not implemented immediately, as they still wanted to work on some tools to let people sort what they could see on Steam. Some months later, when they introduced the system, they made it so that people who wanted to be able to find these games with adult content needed to put that in their Steam settings. With 18 plus content now being allowed on Steam, many different games including visual novels with 18 plus content got onto the platform, with many of the ones that before had only used external 18 plus patches now also having the patch available through Steam as DLC. It now looked like Steam had truly opened up to the adult content found in visual novels and other anime style games. This situation somewhat changed how However, after a short while. While many games and visual novels with adult content were allowed onto the platform, some ended up getting rejected. The reason Steam gave for this was generally a claim that the game contained CP and was therefore illegal. On face value, this might seem justified. However, in a lot of cases, this claim doesn't really seem to hold up. One title initially rejected by Steam, for instance, was the expression Amrelato. And looking at the cover, you might think this makes sense to reject from Steam and call CP, as the characters are clearly underage. The problem with this, however, is that no version of the visual novel exists that has any sexual content. So in this case, it seemed like Steam made a decision based on the characters looking young without actually looking into the content in the visual novel itself to see if it actually contained anything lewd. In this case, the visual novel was allowed on GOG, and after Steam got mocked a bit for rejecting a game without sexual content, they eventually went back on the decision and let it on their platform. In this case, the developers were lucky that the expression Amrelato got onto Steam eventually. However, there are also similar cases where games without sexual content got rejected from Steam and was never given a second chance. From all the comments I've seen on this issue by developers and publishers, my understanding is that generally Steam only gives one chance. If the game is not considered acceptable the first time, they generally aren't given a second chance. So, in this case of something getting a second chance, it is probably just because it caused a big enough reaction, and how easy it was to see that Steam was in the wrong in this case, which was especially easy to see, even for those unfamiliar with the content of the visual novel, due to GOG's endorsement of it. Many other visual novels and other anime style games with sexual content, or at least somewhat explicit content, were also getting rejected by Steam. Though many of these were way tamer and featured older looking characters than others that were accepted to Steam. What was accepted by Steam was now difficult to know. Without any proper guidelines, the only way to figure out what was okay and what was not is based on what they denied and what they accepted. The problem though was that this was highly inconsistent. For instance, Karno Shoujo and Evnickel were accepted, but Karno Shoujo 2 and Evnickel Nickel 2 were not, even though they seem to be pretty similar with regards to the explicit content found in them. With Steam now starting to reject anime style games, 18 plus content was now again mostly done through external 18 plus patches. While 18 plus content could get onto Steam, the risk of the game getting banned from entering Steam was high. The problem now, however, was that even just removing the 18 plus content alone could in some cases not be enough. One example of this was with Local Love, My Commuting Crush, made by Frontwing. For this release, they decided to have the 18 plus content in an external patch, just like they did for their previous release, Local Love, My Cute Roommate. This didn't seem to be enough this time though. 
so it was rejected and never allowed onto Steam. Because of this, Frontwing decided for their next title to play it very safe, not only removing the sexual content and the somewhat explicit content, but straight up removing most of the content, with the 18 plus patch containing all of the missing content, making the 18 plus patch pretty much mandatory for those who wanted to read it. Many other cases like this has now led a lot of the publishers to be very careful with the content they release on Steam. Now back to the case of Rewrite Plus. Shortly before the planned release of Rewrite Plus, Steam rejected another visual novel by the name Amatsutumi from Sekai Project the publisher of Rewrite Plus. Because of this, Sekai Project likely lost a fair amount of money, as the sales they get without Steam is probably not enough to cover the licensing and translation work. I don't know how risky this version of Amatsutumi they plan to release on Steam was, however, given the things they decided to censor in Rewrite Plus, I would assume it's quite tame. While this censorship might look like an overreaction by Sekai Project, given the mild nature of what they censored, I think they are probably somewhat justified in their decision. While writing this script, for instance, two new cases of Steam rejecting games occurred that caught my attention. One being Jewel Princess, which seems to have been too risky for Steam, despite it being rated by the ESRB and having been released on Nintendo Switch. The other being Miramasa, a highly regarded visual novel that was not accepted by Steam, but got accepted by GOG. While this is going on, there are of course also still other visual novels and anime style games with far more explicit content with younger looking characters being accepted on Steam, completely uncut without the need of external patches. With some of this content, I actually even think the potentially illegal argument could hold water. So this doesn't seem to be a consistent attack by Steam on anything anime related that is remotely sexual, but rather just Steam absolutely lacking consistency. While I'm not sure what the situation is behind the scene, my guess would be that they don't have any internal guidelines at Valve for what's accepted on the platform, and the people working on this are completely free to define this themselves, with some basically going the route of everything is fine as long as they don't think it will be a legal problem for Steam, while others ban anything that seems remotely sexual with any characters that look like they could potentially be 17 years old or younger. This creating this odd situation where content you would only find in the most hardcore hentai is allowed on Steam, while others get banned from the platform for for having content that would be considered completely okay in mainstream anime. As far as I can see, there are two main problems with the way Steam is currently doing things, one being the complete inconsistency in what is allowed, with there being no guidelines for publishers to follow, and probably no internal guidelines within Valve saying what is allowed, the other being that it seems games only get one chance. If their first attempt is too raunchy for whoever is handling the process, well, there are no more chances. With this inconsistency, I would assume it is difficult for any company to gauge the state they should release the game in at the platform. If they are unlucky and get rejected, this is probably going to be a huge financial blow, which means they will likely try to be extremely careful, at least if the development costs or localizing cost is very high. Due to this inconsistency, what I fear is not game with the most extreme content not getting brought over to the West, but rather larger titles with high localization costs being seen as too risky. Games with hardcore sexual content has existed for quite a while outside of Steam, and hasn't really relied much upon it. So the market outside of Steam seems big enough to maintain these type of games, at least to some degree, this probably being due to low licensing costs. Larger titles that are more highly regarded though tend to be much more expensive to license and require more translation work. Because of this, getting one of those titles rejected by Steam can be a huge financial blow. This risk means that many of the highly regarded titles will probably end up getting extremely censored, sometimes with an 18 plus patch being available but other times not. 
A recent example is Cyanotype Daydream The Girl Who Dreamt the World, which has not only had its sexual content removed, but also received major rewrites, like for instance the story taking place in university rather than in high school, with there being no plans for an official 18 plus patch. Of course, with this risk of getting rejected on Steam, there might also be titles that otherwise would have been localized that end up getting seen as too risky due to their cost and thus never gets an English release. The current situation to me at least seems a lot worse than the situation when Honeypop was supposed to be removed by Steam. Still, the backlash against Steam has been nowhere near what it was during the Honeypop situation. The reason for this is likely that none of the affected games have had anywhere near as large of a fanbase as Honeypop, with none of the affected games being large enough to cause a backlash against Steam. I doubt anything will be done to change the situation. So unless anything major happens like them banning a very popular game, visual novels and other anime style games and their publishers will likely continue to suffer under the current system built on inconsistency. Hopefully I'm wrong though and Steam ends up fixing their currently broken system. On that sad note I think I will end the video. If you liked the video leave a like, if you didn't well YouTube kind of remove the incentive to dislike videos, but hey, you can still click it if you want to. I'm planning to make more videos in the future about things like visual novels and anime, so if that interests you, maybe subscribe.